Welcome to These Are the Blades of Our Lives, the figure skating show where I talk to you about figure skating like it is drama for your mamas. On today's episode, I am recapping the um, Istanbul Junior Grand Prix as well as the Lombardia Trophy. Starting with the Junior Grand Prix ice dance, there wasn't much to talk about. Jeffrey Chan and his new partner, Yali Pedersen, they made their grand debut in the juniors. The short program was okay. Um, a fall in the long program sort of derailed them again. It's, it's a brand new pair, so I think we should just wait and see what happened. I'm not prepared to judge them yet based on one outing. Let's give them a year or two and see what happens from there. Jeffrey's still fabulous. Oh, my God. Just fabulous skating. Um, but, yeah, let's wait and see what happens with them. Then we moved on to the junior men. Two of my favorite little skaters were here. Um, you know, my beloved little um, men yukso as well as Rio Nakata. Both were competing here. I am so, guys, you know I keep saying that I'm not going to get emotionally invested in juniors because I've suffered too many heartbreaks, but Menuk just makes that impossible for me. He is quintessentially everything that I love about figure skating. He emotes his knee bend, beautiful jump technique, his music his connection with us, the audience. I think if we keep going, I can see my little menu on world podiums, on Olympic podiums. That is how much I'm invested in this junior, even though I told myself I would not. Unfortunately, at his last competition, you know, he had a really bad short where he wasn't able to do his triple flip, triple toe combination. And even though he came back in the free, he didn't have a triple axel, so he was only able to finish fifth. But not here. He had a good, clean short program. No triple axel, but clean jumps, good spins, and then to top it off, he came in the long, whipped the triple axel with all of his triples, with the emotion, with everything, and he finished first, but I don't know if a fifth place and a first place finish is going to be enough to get him to the Grand Prix final. I pray it is, but I'm just not sure. Then we also had Rio Nakata, who won his last Grand Prix with his really nice jump technique. He came here, he had the quad, he had triple, the triple axel. This is another thing that the judges are doing, and I want to take a moment. I know I throw a lot of dirt on the judges because they're corrupt to their core sometimes, and all their little dinner parties and white envelope accepting. But I am beginning to see this movement where the judges are rewarding complete skaters. We are focusing not just on the technique, but on the technique plus the artistry, plus the packaging, plus the musicality, plus everything. We know in a lot of competition, if a skater can jump, even if that skater can't skate, the jump score equals the tech score. This did not happen here. Technically speaking, Rio Nakata had a higher technical program in terms of jumps than Mensuk did. However, in terms of being a complete skater, you could tell Rio is nowhere near what Mensuk is. Their spin, their speed, their glide, their knee bend. And the judges took all of that into account. They didn't just take into account the fact that Rio had the quad and the triple axel. They took into account the spins, the jump, the choreography, the musicality, and they put the complete skater in first place. And so unfortunately, um, for Rio, he did not win this second leg of the Grand Prix, but I feel like it was a fair and right judging because a skater that was more complete than him won. Now that's not to say 
Rio, who's really young, these kids are like 13, 14, 15, cannot become a complete skater. He already has that beautiful Japanese jump technique, knee bend and glide. He can now, he's seeing the judges are going to reward him for working on the spin, the musicality, the completeness. He's going to add all of that to his quad and triple axle and become a complete skater. So Rio came in in second place. And this gives him a gold and a silver. And I feel like that should be enough for him to make it to the final, given that we're halfway through the Grand Prix. So I think he should safely be into the final. Then we had our second Japanese man, um, Dea Ibihara. He was making his Junior Grand Prix debut. Again, another Japanese skater with good jump technique, good knee bend, good glide. I wouldn't say anything else is special about him. Um, he was first in the short program. He had a really solid short program, triple axle, triple flip, triple toe. He had a really solid short program. But again, there was nothing that I was like, oh, this is amazing about it. And his long, he didn't do so well. But again, it wasn't anything amazing. It was just another really good Japanese skater. Um, you know, um, we had Konstantine um, Supertashvili. Yes, the Vili's are back. The Vili's. Um, he was six in the short program. He had a really nice long program and made it all the way up to fourth place. He does not have the Mori C. <laughs> Tosal. We don't know what kind of jump. His jump technique is actually a little better. Even though he's a Vili, he has a better jump technique. But those were like the main, um, you know, boys at Istanbul. Then we got to the ladies. Oh, my goodness. Ami Nakai ended up winning this event. I am really, really liking what is going on with the junior ladies. I like how they're growing. I like how they're developing. But I will say, for me, this was not a clean competition. There were only two skaters that actually had um, clean free programs, or two clean programs. One was the Japanese skater, Rina um, Unzono, who was making her debut as well as Evelyn Lynn Grace. So it was the Japanese and the American. These were the only two skaters who had clean, free program. Everyone else was a little up and down. So to start with, um, in fifth place was um, So Jin Young. So Jin Young. She was in second place after the short program. A beautiful short program. Again, that South Korean ladies training that they are doing there, beautiful. If they don't overcompete them, the, the South Korean ladies will be a force to reckon with. She's got beautiful postures, beautiful spin, beautiful ice presence. She did beautifully in the short program. I actually would have had her in first place over Amni, but at the same time, I wasn't like, oh no. It's horrible that, you know, she was in second place. Unfortunately for her, when it came time to the long program, it got a little away with her. I think the pressure of being in second place, the pressure of possibly meddling was just a little too much for her and just one too many falls in the long program took her out of contention and she went from like second to fifth. But you know what? This is a learning. This is a learning process. She still has another Grand Prix event. She still has Junior World. She still has the bazillion, you know, Jap South Korean competition she's going to have to go through this season. So we will see her improve. Then we had in fourth place was the U.S. Evelyn, um, Elsie Lynn Grace. Is it Elise? 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 Elise Lynn Gra Gracie. Elise Lynn Gracie. She's a Tammy Gamble skater, which in itself says everything. If Iteritu Beretsi is the queen of teaching pre-rotation, then Tammy Gamble is the queen of teaching under-rotation. 
And that's exactly what her jumps were. They were under-rotated. However, she had a clean short program, which left her in fifth place. And then she came out and she had a really nice, really nice free skate. Did all of her jumps, did her spend and everything. Unfortunately for her, and we have seen this with so many American skaters, especially the ones who go to Tammy Gamble, because U.S. figure skating refuses to get themselves some tech specialists, these girls end up in the middle of the pack with under-rotated jumps. And I feel like it's going to be the same story all over again. She is going to end up in the middle of the pack with under-rotated jumps. That, that That's it, you know? She's going to end up like fifth, sixth, seven to eight because her jumps are under-rotated. And third place was the twin twin, um, Yuja Ken. Triple Axel just got away with her in the, in the free program. The short program was lovely. She's a little character. She's a little spitfire. The the free program, unfortunately, a fall on her triple axle, another fall. It, it just, not her day. But she still did well enough to go from fourth place, from third, well, she still did well enough to hang on to third place. She did go from third place in the short to fourth place overall with, you know, um, great Len Gracie passing her and getting third in the free, but she did enough overall to maintain her bronze medal. The skate of the night for me, and in second place, was Rina Uzono. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, Uzono. You know, sometimes when it's your first time out, you're nervous, the stomach is grumbling, we didn't see any of that from Rena. We saw none of that from Rena. She came, she did what she needed to do. A very calm skater, very unbothered, very unruffled. She just did what she had to do and then call it a day. Again, very impressed with her composure, very impressed with her jump technique, that beautiful Japanese jump technique. Very impressed with how she carried herself. She earned herself a silver a silver medal at this point, and then she still has one more competition. So she does, there is a possibility that she could also make it to the Grand Prix Final. We don't know. And then the winner of the night was Amni Nakai. Beautiful short program. You know, everything was good. I don't like the leg wrap. Her jump technique has this hideous leg wrap that I don't like. She did get the triple axel here. You know, that was her goal. She said, you know, she really wanted to get the triple axel because she didn't get it at her last competition. She came. She did what she set out to do. She landed that triple axel. She was not playing. However, her leg wrap and her jumps in the air is just not visually pleasant. It's really not nice to look at. And I feel like leg wraps are very hard to unlearn. I feel like they're very hard to unlearn. And I find that to be very surprising because rarely, rarely do you find a Japanese skater because of their technique to have the leg wrap. But unfortunately, she does have a pretty, pretty hideous leg wrap. So let's see what happens with that. But with a win here and a win at her last competition, Amni Nakai will be at the Grand Prix Final. I hope she gets two clean programs at the Grand Prix Final because she has yet to have two clean programs at any of her competition. Now, moving on from Istanbul, we went straight to Lombardia. Lombardia. This was like the first major, major international challenger series competition of the season. So I want to get started right, right away with pairs. Why do I want to get started with pairs? Because I'm one of those person, I'm one of those people who likes to say, I told you so. I told you guys, I know pairs was a hot mess two years ago. I know it didn't look so good last year, but look at them now. 
I told you these pairs were going to get used to competing. They were going to get used to winning. They were going to get used to being on that podium. And they were not going to want to let it go. They were going to go home. They were going to work harder. And they were going to come back stronger. And little by little, pairs is rebuilding. Rebuilding little by little. And I love to see it. So at this event, um, you know, we had some new partnership. Well, not, not really new. Um, for Lucretia Bricardi and Matteo Goetzi, this is their second year together. They came out. They looked really good. But a brand new, brand new pair competing for the first time together was uh, Maneva Fabian Hayes and Nikita um, Valadin. They look so good. I cannot believe this was a brand new pair just coming out and competing, and they look so good. So in fourth place at the pairs was, well, actually, we could talk about the fifth place finishers, too, because I felt really bad for them. So the fifth place um, was the Italian pair of um, Rebecca Shaladi and Filippo Ambrosini. Oh my goodness, that was devastating. They started their program, it was going okay, and then his boot snapped. And they had to stop in the middle of their program. He had to relace up his boot and they had to tape it back together. And unfortunately, that is a five-point mandatory deduction. And with that deduction, they literally found themselves in seventh place. They came back and they completed the program. And it was, it was good, but at that point, the damage was already done and they just had to take that five point deduction, which put them in seventh place, but they came back in the long program fighting and they ended up in third place overall. Unfortunately, they are still doing double jumps and single jumps at this level of skating. I feel like that's just not going to help them. I think when they're competing against more skaters, that is probably going to constantly be the difference between them being on the podium and them not making it to the podium that double single single they're gonna have to like do a triple single a double I don't know like a double axle double axle double axle at least this double double single is just not gonna help them in the long run they just need to keep falling and suck it up and get it into their program in fourth place um, was um, Lucretia um, Bracari and Matteo Garizzi. They looked really good in that short program. I, I feel like there's so much potential in this pair. Their lines match so much. They look so in tune with each other. Unfortunately, you know, the free did not go as well as they probably wanted it to. But again, this is the beginning of the season. I can see this pair growing. I am so amazed by what is going on in pairs in Italy. It Italy has like three really good pairs. I guess the, the fact that, you know, the 2026 Olympic is going to be in Milan is really motivating the entire, you know, figure skating community in Italy to, you know, really push themselves. Then we moved on to the German, um, Anika Hacker and her new partner. They've been together now for two seasons, um, Robert Canal. Again, again, they look good. She always looks so fabulous in every lift. She is one of my favorite pair skaters in terms of lift. She eats those lifts up. Her back is always arch. When she comes down, her face is always giving you Miss D level of pace. She's about those lifts. The throws were good. The side-by-side -side jumps when they were on look amazing. Another pair, beautiful line, nicely matched. And I like her. I that There's something about Annika that I like. And they looked really good. They were fourth in the short, fourth in the long. And overall, they managed to get the bronze medal. And then, brand new pairing of Maneva Fabian Hayes and Nikita Ambaladin. They were third in the short. 
really good short for them, this being their first major competition. Then they came out in the long and they were like, we could do even better. Not perfect, but another very tall, ice-taking, spacious team. Germany also has two good pairs on its hand. And then wrapping up the top spot was the Italian pair of Sera Conti and Nicole and um, Nicolo Marci. Their short program was good. They got the twist together. The twist was really problematic for them all last season. This season, it looks much better. Unfortunately, that long program was so scary. They did everything they needed to do, their throws, their side-by-side. And then it came to, like, their last lift, and he had her up in the air, and then they just crumbled. And, oh, my God, this is why, like, out of all the disciplined pairs is the one discipline I would never be able to do. She just hit the ice And I was just so happy that everything is okay with her. I hope they give her medical care and, you know, this is, this is not lasting that everything is good with her. She has my prayers, but oh my God, pears is so scary. Pears is so scary, but they still managed to do enough with the combination of the short and the long to win this competition with, you know, a six point lead. However... It is so close between the pairs. Like, there is only three points separating fifth and fourth. There is only three points separating third and second. All the pairs are so close. I cannot wait to see what happened in Europeans because we're going to see a repeat of these same pairs at European, and I'm really looking forward to it. So moving on to the men. The main thing about men at Lombardia was, of course, the return to international international competition of Yuma Kagiyama. Oh, it's always a pleasure to see Yuma Kagiyama. I will never forget how happy he was at his senior debut, how adorable him and his father um, are. And you can see him still with that same delightful youthfulness, but with a level of maturity to his skating. Of course, he wasn't here at 100%. The jumps were a little off. You could tell he was only skating at 70%. But if you remove the jumps, his extension, his centering, his projection, his musicality, he always had beautiful knee bends. He always had ice coverage. He always had edge control. Now he's working, you know, with Carolina and that is bringing out the more, you know, outgoing part of his personality. And you could see it. He's growing. Let's say at the end of the season, we get to world. He has all of this, the musicality. He has, you know, the projection. He has the ice presence. And now he's at 100% in terms of the jumps we might have something. We might have something. We have to wait and see. Um, of course, we didn't have the Georgian. Um, Naki, um, Nika Egazi. If anyone knows how to pronounce these names, please feel free to correct me. I'm incredibly bad with all names. All of them. Not all of them. So if you guys know how to say these names, please feel free to correct me in the comments. I would really appreciate it. So I think his name is Nika Edgazi. Edgazi. I think so. Um, so he was from Georgia. I'm sorry. My man stopped and ripped open his shirt. I was like, okay, okay. You feeling yourself? And I'm about that. Feel you. Do you. Okay. He had his little shirt ripping moment. Beautiful quad. Beautiful quad. Um, you know, nice skating overall, not necessarily my aesthetic, but nice skating overall. Then we had the Americans who were doing the Americans. To date, the Americans are, the American men are unable to do two clean programs. You either get a good short or you get a good long, but you are not going to get both. With Andrew Togashev, we had a very nice short program from him. Nice 
again, a very musical skater, very projective, good ice presence, not probably the best competitor in the world because he can deliver two clean program. The short was good. We came back for the long and it was another Andrew Turgushev moment. Then we had the opposite with um, Kemden Polkinen. Short program, jumps just escaped him. They just were not there to be found. Again, beautiful skater, nice extension, always has interesting programs, love the outfits, but when it comes time to the jump, not there for him. The short program, the jumps could not be found. Then he came back with the long program, managed to get all the way up to third from eighth place. The inconsistency of the American men and men overall just continue. I would like to say I hope to see them progress and see some change this season, but I say that every season. So, but I'm an eternal hopeful individual. So I hope this season, um, Andrew and Kenden can get it together. And then the Japanese um, Nozumu Yosh Yoshika um, rounded up the top five. Again, another really nice Japanese skater. Nothing wow about him, nothing bad about him. Just another good Japanese skater. Then we move on to the ice dance. The ice dance. I'm going to say it. I don't care. This is the first time that I've actually kind of like the Italians programs. I said it. I said it. But anyways, before I get into the Italians, let us get into the junior world champions making their senior debut. Katerina Moskova and Danielle Mas Masev. Moskova, Moskova, Moskev. Anyhow, the brother and sister team made their debut. This young team has a lot of potential. Just a lot of potential. I guess because they've been skating together for so long as siblings, they have just an innate understanding of how they move, where the other partner is, where they're going to be. Their ice coverage, their knee bend. Give, if they had the right packaging and the right program, I wish, I wish they had gone to Marie France. Because I feel like this is the kind of team that Marie France and her team could really sink their te teeth into and really make something out of. But anyhow, I feel like with the right packaging, the right program, this team could climb up the ladder really fast. I feel like they could be a top 10 team by the time 2026 come. And then for the next Olympic, they could easily become a contender. So they made their senior debut and they did very well, you know, with like a top five finish. Now, while they are climbing in sixth place, we had Carolina Grain and Michael Parson. Now, their program, both the short and the long, is better than what they had last season. It's not great, but it is better than what they had last season. Unfortunately, you could see they haven't, like, either they haven't practiced it enough or they haven't gotten their nerves together. There was errors in the sh rhythm dance and they had mistake in the long program. And unfortunately for them, Instead of gaining the momentum that they lost, they seem to be losing more momentum because they are now behind. They went from fourth place in the short program to seventh place in the long program, coming behind a junior team that is making their senior debut. That is not good. And then making things worse for Parson and Green, their U.S. teammate, um, Emily Bratti and Ian Somerville also beat them because they finished fifth both in the rhythm dance and 
in the loan program. So unfortunately, this is not bowling. This is not this does not look good for Green and Parson. I'm hoping they can get it together because Nationals uh, might be problematic for them. Now we go to the podium. We had Maria um, Kazakova and Gregorio Rivera, the Georgian team. They had a really nice short rhythm dance, which put them in third. And then in the um, free dance, they lost to the young um, brother and sister team, which put them in fourth. But overall, they still finish in third place. I really like this team. I've liked them since they won the Junior Grand Prix. I think they're a very interesting team. I think they have a lot of personality. They're memorable. You see a program and you're like, yep, that's definitely their point of view. I am, however, very concerned for this team. Unfortunately for them, Diana Davis and Gleb Smokin have gone over to the Georgian um, Federation. And we literally saw the Russian Federation, which is a huge, probably at that point, the most powerful figure skating federation in the ISU. We saw them literally threw away their entire ice dance program to appease Itari Tuberetsi by sending Diana Davis and Gled Smokin over several of their younger pairs who were more talented. I feel like if 2026 come around, like not even 2026, if Worlds come around and Georgia only has one spot, I think the Georgian Federation will, without a doubt, send Diana Davis and Gleb Smokin to appease Itari Tuberetsi. And unfortunately, I feel like it is going to be Maria and Gregory who are the ones who suffer because they are obviously the better team. They were the better team when they were juniors. They are the better team now they are seniors. But at that point, it's not going to be about the better team. I think it's going to be about the connection. And I feel like if that happened or when that happened, when they lose a world you know, spot, when they lose an Olympic spot, are they going to react the way some of the Russian ice dancers react where they just decided to quit the sport because they realized their hard work and their determination doesn't amount to as much as having the right mother and the right political pull. So I do feel like this team will probably find themselves behind, behind Diana Davis and Gleb Smokin, not due to their lack of talent or hard work, but because of the politics of figure skating. And that will be very hard to watch, and I do worry for them. I pray that doesn't happen, but we've seen it before, and this is figure skating. And ice dance is, all of figure skating is political, especially ice dance. Then we had another sibling team, um, Natalie Tashelarova and Philip Tashelar. Tashelarova, 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 Philip Tashelar. Please feel free to correct me with these names. I love her so much. She is such a powerful skater. She has got so much oomph. The ice coverage, her knees digs into the ice and they push off with so much speed. They're so fast. I love this team. I don't necessarily love their programs. I don't love their choice of music. I don't love their packaging, but I love their power. I love their speed. I love the fact that they are like, we are here. Look at us. They take up the ice with no apologies. They eat up the ice. And I feel like if ever they get the right packaging, the right program, the right music, this will be a team that we will have to sit up and watch. They remind me of like um, Madison Hubble and Zachary Donahue. So much talent, so much power. Never quite the right music and the right packaging. But you know what? It could happen. It could happen. I'm looking forward to it. And then, of course, the winner, Charlene Guinard and Marco Fabri. Guys, you know 
how much I have thrown dirt on this team. I am the first one to say it. And I don't throw dirt out of meanness. I throw dirt because they have so much potential. They are technically the most proficient ice dance team out there. If you really look at their twizzles, if you look at their pattern, if you look at their edge, if you look at their control, they are the most talented team out there. And they have always been the most dully packaged team ever. Now, I'm not saying their two programs are the most fabulous thing ever known to men. What I'm saying is for them, it is huge. The, sh the, the rhythm dance is the most alive I have ever seen them. Did they go 80s gotchy? Yes, they did. Did they take the theme a little too literal and too far? Yes, they did. But do they look committed to it? Yes, they do. Are they having fun with it? Yes, they are. And because they're having fun with it, I'm having fun with it. Now, the free dance, um, there's a lot of unique lifts, a lot of unique moments, a lot of unique, innovative holes in this dance. I'm not crazy about the music. And I don't like the overall flow of it. And that might be because it's a new program to them. They're still learning it. It looks a little clunky in, in places. But overall, this is them growing. This is so much better than what they've had before. I feel like if they continue to grow, they continue to fix here and there, they continue to smooth things out, they may be a contender. Maybe a contender, depending on what kind of material we get out of the Marie-France Dubré camp. This may be their year. You never know. Overall, I was very happy with the ice dance at Labardia. I I'm very happy for the Italians. And then, of course, as always, we wrap up with the women. None of them had a clean loan program. The short programs were okay. That loan program, there was like... I think out of the top six, only one skater had a clean, not perfect, but she didn't fall long program. So we're starting off with the sixth place finisher, which is the American um, Ava Marie Ziegler. Short program, I was like, okay, Ava, okay. I see you want to come this season. You want to show us. Then we got to the long program and it was a complete implosion complete implosion. She took one fall and I was like, don't get up. Let, let, let's not, let's not continue the program. I know these skaters, you know, skate and they train to get up and finish the program, but I think we need to change that. I think there are certain falls that you take. You should just be like, nope, I'm calling it quit. It, that, that it was that kind of program. It was very difficult to watch her just fall and fall and fall. So after like the long program she went from like fifth place to tenth place it was very hard to watch um then in fifth place we had lala um naki goodman now i never have lara in the conversation never honestly never whenever i'm thinking about like european i'm thinking about world i'm thinking about anything lara is never in my list and yet like the little engine that could Lara always managed to sneak herself in there. And her programs are so unique and so inventive. Another skater that I feel has something to say that is very unique. She is not afraid to commit herself completely to her program. The short wasn't her best. Jumps have never been her best. But she's working on that triple-triple combination. She is working on it, and I believe she will get it before before the Milan Olympic, my girl Lara Naki Goodman will have a banging triple triple. I believe that. And then, of course, one of my favorite, one of the fans' favorite, um, Ekaterina Karakova. Great outing for her. Great outing for her. And I'm going to tell you the best part her tights matches her skin tone, and it was tuck. They heard my prayers. They heard my pleas. That fugly mustard tight, they got rid of it, got her some adult tight, and tucked it into her boots. I really like her little Kill Bill short program. Again, she's still doing that triple-double. 
it is what it is. But she looks like she's having so much fun. Again, she's one of those skaters. She looks like she's enjoying skating so much. It makes you as the viewer enjoy skating along with her. Long program, a lot better. A lot better. It wasn't perfect, but she was the only one who stayed on her feet and did not fall. A lot better. Good start, Ekaterina. Good start. Um, third place with the bronze medal was, um, Cheon Kim. So it looks like Cheon is a little injured. At the end of her free program, she was holding on to her shoulder. She looked a little injured. Her, and she also grew. You could tell she's a little bit taller than she was last season. And I think that's kind of like affecting her center of gravity and her jumps are a little off. Her jumps were off in the short and they were off in the free. If she is injured, I pray that her team decides to pull her out of competition and let her rest. Also, to give her time to adjust to her new body, to adjust to her growth. Again, she's a little firecracker. She's one of my favorite skaters, and I really do think, given, you know, time to heal, she's going to come back and kill it. If not this season, the next season. I always like seeing Cheon. She was second in the short and second in the free combined. She ended up with the bronze medal. Um, the silver medal went to Hana um, Yoshida, who is making her senior debut. She was a junior last year. She's making her senior debut this year. Really nice all-around skater. There's nothing that I would say that's amazing about her, but there's nothing that's offensive about her either. She's just a really nice, well-rounded skater, again, with that Japanese jump technique that has that beautiful knee bend nice straight up in the air she comes down i feel like this would if she can keep it together and compete under the pressure this could be a really good season for her she could have a really nice senior debut but we're gonna have to wait and see but she was third in the in the short program, but she managed to have a really good long program. It wasn't perfect, but she had a really good long program, which brought her into second place overall in the silver, in the silver medal. The winner is Miss Anastasia Gabanova. Way to go. She is not, she's one of those skaters when the program doesn't go right, like when there's a fall, she kind of gives up on the program. She's not a fighter type of skater. She was really good in the short program. She was confident. You could see she worked really hard. And then the free program started and she was doing really well. And then she took a fall and you kind of saw that it kind of knocked the wind out of her and took you know, the sale out of her. And then she kind of just phoned in the rest of the program. There was no fight to it. And I feel like that, and that ended up putting her in fourth place in the free. And she barely had enough. She barely had enough for the win. And I feel like that is going to be a problem for her. She needs to get a little more mental toughness that if one thing goes wrong with the program, to not give up on the program, but instead to like dig in and really fight for the rest of the program, getting every spin, every GOE, every point that she can. Because unfortunately, I feel like the judges have never been kind um, to Gabanova, and they don't seem like they're going to be kind to her now. So I feel like it's up to her to fight and make the judges give her the scores that she wants to see. Overall, the one thing that I was so happy to see, and that was in the seniors, that was in the juniors, is the fairness of the judging. You have everyone doing the same element. Everyone is doing a triple flip, triple toe. Everybody's doing a double axle. Everybody's doing a triple axle. And what really always bothered us with the Iteri bonus was the disgusting taste it left in our mouth when everyone was doing the same thing and these skaters had 10 points. And you could not do the math to figure out where that 10 points came from. Or when a skater would miss their triple combination completely and yet there was still like five points 
off of a leader who did a beautiful, clean program. Because we could not, because our, our minds and our heart could not compute what our eyes were seeing. Because we were looking at the same thing and we could not understand where the extra 10 points was coming from. It left this dirty taste in our mouth after we watched every competition. And I feel like that dirty taste is gone right now. Because every competition, everyone is so close. Like, four points is separating. Three points is separating. Less than a point is separating. Even if you don't agree with the first and the second place finisher, it's so close that you can understand that, yes, maybe the judges prefer this skater to the next. There's a level of justification now to how the judges are judging that we just didn't have before. And for me, and this is just my personal opinion, all of this is just my personal opinion. That just makes skating so much enjoyable for me. It makes it so much more exciting and I'm so much more invested. Anyhow, I really enjoyed the Junior Grand Prix. I really enjoy Lombardia. I cannot wait for the season to continue. But you guys let me know. What do you think of these two events? And what do you think of how the judges are judging so far? Leave me a comment.